middle of uh, of a grueling non-conference <laughs> schedule here a little bit. Uh, I think as, sa- as, as of Saturday, we had the fourth uh, hardest non-conference schedule in the country. So with a, with a new coach and me, even though I've been at UT Arlington for 13 years, um, you know, it's still new. It's still new to our players. We've had some adversity, and then we've had some success. We've won two straight. Uh, we went to Santa Barbara. Uh, a couple of weeks ago and, and uh, uh, beat the, the reigning Big West champions and they were picked to win their league this year. And it's the first top 100 non-conference uh, road win that we've had as a program in four and a half years. And that, that last one was at BYU and Provo uh, when I was an associate head coach. So, and then we beat Lamar Saturday at home uh, in sort of an ugly game. So we're playing better, but we've had, We've had an unbelievably hard non-conference schedule. I think eight of our 11 opponents were all NCAA tournament teams from last year. And, and we're fixing to see two more this week as we go to Old Roberts on Thursday and Oklahoma on Sunday. So, um, you know, part of it, we've always played a hard schedule here at UT Arlington since I've been here uh, for various reasons. We're, we're getting better. Um, I like our team. Like most teams, we've had some injuries and some adversities and things like that. But, uh, you know, it's all preparing for Sunbelt play. But, uh, but we're, 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 I feel like we're getting better, and I feel like that we're, we're doing some things uh, in a way that I want to see done and how we want to play and style of play and things like that. But we've got a long way to go, and uh, uh, we got to get, got to get healthy, and uh, we got to continue to get better. Coach, a question from Jarius Johnson here from our media. Um, great team win against Lamar on Saturday. How do you feel about your zone and man defense? And when do you feel like you should go to the zone in a game? Uh, great question. I, sometimes it's just because of feel. It's because of style of play. It may be because you're in foul trouble. We played some zone at Santa Barbara, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and we hadn't played a lot of zone. But we had to against them just because we were we were in foul trouble. So there, there's there's different things, you know. Guys, uh, different coaches change defenses on, you know, after timeouts and things like that. And and uh, we didn't play a lot of zone against Lamar. We played, I think one, I think we only played one possession, and they made about a forty foot three on us. And so I immediately got out of it, uh, as as a uh, neurotic coach would do, and we probably should have stayed in it a little bit, but. You know, we want to be multiple defensively. We want to be able to play some zone and man. We just haven't played a lot of zone defense through the course of the non-conference quite yet. And then another question from our media coach, an impressive defensive performance against Lamar on Saturday. Um, how are you looking to improve on three-point shooting on the offensive end? Well, we talked about it this morning as a staff. You know, we're, we're trying to establish some things within our program. Every, you know, every – Every good program has a distinct style of play. They all have things they hang their hat on. Obviously, here at UT Arlington, I wanted us to try to be a really, really elite defensive team because that's uh, some of the successes that we've had here in the past that that I've been a part of. We were really, really good defensively. We're we're not shooting the three very well. And I think we have guys that can make shots. I really do. Uh, But when you have a different style of play offensively than you've than you've had the last three years, not that one's better and one's worse. It just takes a little bit of time. And so, you know, our execution has not caught up from an offensive standpoint to where we are defensively right now. And I think once we do that, I think our three-point percentages will go up. I really do. Um, but we're, we're not shooting the three well. We need to shoot it better. Um, and, and we're continually work on it as part of part of what we got to do to to improve, to have a chance to be successful once we get to the conference play, for sure. Coach, you have a guy who started his career, Pedro Castro, started his career at UTA, transferred out, and now he's back with the program. Can you talk a little bit about the decision to bring him back and and then his impact he's had? I believe he's your second leading scorer right now. Yeah, Pedro was a – he was a young man that I recruited when I was associate head coach. Scott Cross and I both recruited him and and, – you know, we loved Pedro coming out of high school. Felt like he had some upside. His first year here, we redshirted him because he needed it and because of the roster that we had in place. And then uh, we had a coaching change, and he was able to play his, his first year here 
uh, when Chris Ogden was the head coach and I was retained. And then, uh, you know, some things happened. He left, went to junior college, went to Houston Baptist, was their leading scorer and rebounder last year. And when I got the job, obviously with the transfer portal, him being from the Metroplex, uh, he was in the portal and we were able to get him back. But I'm glad we got him back. We needed some experience. We needed um, some, a scoring threat on the perimeter. I was familiar with him. He was familiar with me. He's from the area. It was just a perfect fit. And he's played well for us in the non-conference. He's had some inconsistencies, which is, uh, you know, not his fault all the time. And he's getting better and he's had some good games. And so, but, it, but I trust him. And I think he trusts me. And, and anytime you're starting a program as a new head coach, you want to have people around you, uh, especially this first year, that you that are high character and that you can trust. And uh, that that was the biggest deal with Pedro. Not only is he a good player, but the prior relationship was a big reason that we were able to get him back. And then, Coach, one last one for you here. You've played. Well, you mentioned your non-conference, one of the toughest non-conference schedules in the league. Um, despite your record, how do you think that prepares you for the grind of the conference season um, here at the end of December? Well, it's it, it, it's going to prepare us, no question. I, I but I think everybody's non-conference prepares them. You know what you want to do is you want to have a little bit of a balance, and we really didn't have a balance this year. A lot of it was because of COVID. We inherited some contracts that we had to put off, and and uh, and like I said earlier, we've always played a hard non-conference schedule here, but. But, you know, when you play at Oklahoma State, you play at Utah State, you play at, um, you know, at San Diego State and at Santa Barbara. And now, you know, we're about to be at Oral Roberts in Oklahoma this week. Is that it's, it's you know, you get in the conference play and it's, you, it's, you, you've seen it before. Now, does it translate into being a better team? I don't know that, you know, because I think winning helps translate and helping you in conference play. And, and I don't, I, I think that's the most important thing. And so we, me, as the steward of this program, we've got to get our non-conference schedule right. Sure, we want to play good people like everybody in the Sun Belt does, um, but we have to have a little bit better balance. So it, it's yet to be determined. You know, we did this three years ago. We had an unbelievably tough non-conference schedule. I think we were one in 11 going into Sunbelt play, we ended up finishing second and got to the conference championship game, tournament game. And so it benefited us a little bit that year. But, you know, the past two years, we've had tough non-conference schedules and it hasn't benefited us because we've been mediocre in Sunbelt play. So I think it just depends on your players and your team and how you approach it. And, and, and you got to get better. You know, we're trying to get better every day, every game. And sometimes, you know, you look at the scoreboard and it that's not always the way you measure getting better, especially when we're playing people like we're playing. So I don't know, it's yet to be determined. I hope it helps us. Um, I feel like we're getting better and that's the most important thing.